أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Common Method Bias Using AMOS IBM SPSS AMOS Series Over the last 10 years, more and more attention has been paid to the idea of common method bias in the measurement analysis phase. Now common method bias is actually the inflation or in rare cases deflation of the true correlation among observable variables in the study. Research has shown that because respondents are replying to the survey questions about independent and dependent variables at the same time, this can artificially inflate the covariation which actually leads to biased parameter estimates. In this video, we are going to discuss how to assess and control for common method bias. The methods include Hermann single factor test and latent common method factor. There is another method, marker variable technique that will be discussed later. So the other method to assess common method bias is latent common method factor. This is one of the most used method to assess common method bias. The most popular way to handle common method bias is to include a common method factor in your CFA. A common method factor is a latent variable that has direct relationship with constructs indicators. So what you do is you include a common factor and it is directly related to every single indicator in your model. The common method factor will represent and account for variances across constructs due to the potential method bias. You will first model your CFA, then you will include a latent variable in the model with no indicators. So what you are doing is, you are just using the same original model, but what you are doing is you are including another latent variable that has no indicators. Now label this variable as common method or whatever you want to in order to remember that this is actually a common method construct. From this common method construct, you will start drawing relationship from the construct to all the indicators in the model. You will include a direct relationship from the unobserved common latent construct to every indicator in the model. You might want to go about this in a systematic manner so that you do not miss any relationship to any of the indicators. With a CFA that has a large number of constructs, this can be substantial number of relationship. So my best advice is to start adding relationship one construct at a time until all the indicators have a relationship to the unobservable common method factor. Now let's start doing this. So here is our model. So what we are going to do is we are going to first go to the input model so that you can add a common latent variable. Here is our latent variable so we're just going to click it here and we are going to add one here so now that you have added it double click on it and you can name it let's say common method now once that's done the next step is let's link this common method factor to all the indicators how do we do this click draw path single headed arrows and draw a path from common method to your indicators, all of them. Now I've drawn the path from this common method factor to all the indicators. Let's brush it up a little. Just clean it up if you want to, just like this for all of them. Now what I need to do next is, let's uh, obviously arrange this a bit. Let's click this one here, preserve the symmetries. Let's bring the error terms here like this so we can create some space. Okay, let's move this one here. Now let's move this. Click here. Let's move this a bit here like this. We can arrange this one here like this. We can have this one like here. This one moved here so that your common method is a bit clear here like this. Okay, now the next step is that we have to constrain each of these parts here equally. So what I'll do is, let's say I'll click one of them, double click, go to parameters and let's add regression weight A. You can add any thing, A, B, C, whatever. Double click the common method and set the variance to 1. So all this done. Now we have to do this for all of these other parts as well. Now this can be troublesome. So what you are going to do is, we are going to select 
each one of them here. Now that each one of them is selected, I'm going to drag this particular A to all the other paths. How do I do this? Now click here. Drag properties from object to object. So we click here. We want to drag parameter constraints. So we click here. So what we do is just hover your mouse on to one of the paths. So it's red. Now drag it and drop it onto the other one and see it's all copied onto the other one so you have dragged the properties from one of the parts to all other parts now you can close it deselect it and now let's run our model obviously it will ask you to go query but we do not need to worry about this just proceed with the analysis and let's look at the output what we are interested in is model fit now look at the degrees of freedom here 80 6 and look at the chi square 213.769 now what was this in the original model need our original model here it is now this is our original model and this is the one with common method factor so now let's run the original model go to the output and look at the chi square degrees of freedom 87 and 226.111 so let's use Excel for a second. So what was your original value in the original model? Your chi-square was, let's see, 226.111, 226.111, and your degrees of freedom was 87. What's with the other model, the common method factor model? Here it is, 213.769, 213.769, and your degrees of freedom was 86. Now what's the difference here? Look at this, is equal to this, the original model, minus the one with common method factor, enter. So the difference is 12.342. Now how do we interpret this difference? Let's go back to our slides. After the analysis finishes, obviously we went into the output and we determined the difference in chi-square. Specifically, what we are interested in is chi-square values of the CFA. The CFA comparison will examine what the chi-square values was for your original CFA and when the common method construct was actually included. Now CFA, when the common method construct was included in the analysis, you should see only one degree of freedom difference between the two models. Remember, we constrained all the relationship in the common method construct model to be equal. Hence, we need to see if differences in chi-square is significant which would indicate a common method bias. So you will only see the difference of one degrees of freedom. In this case, the difference was 12.342, which is way over 3.84 for 1 degrees of freedom. Hence, we do have an issue of common method bias. Now, what if my common method bias is significant? In this case, our test is significant. You will need to include a common method variable and its relationship to all indicators when you start testing the structural relationship between the constructs. By including the common method variable in testing these structural relationships, you are actually controlling for potential common method bias. So when you are using or when you are testing your structural relationship, you need to have this common method variable included in your model. Now what if you want to exactly see where the potential bias is actually originating from? You can go to the standardized regression weights of the CFA output that has the common method construct included. In the standardized regression weights, examine the relationship from the common method construct to the indicators and observe which indicator is loading at a higher level. Now let's look at this. Let's look where are we getting this particular problem from. What we do is we just open our model with common method. Just go to the output, go to the estimates and here look at since we constrained it. So all of them, the unstandardized regression weights are equal. Now look at here, 
which one is loading significantly high well none of them are actually loading significantly high but still your chi-square value is greater than 3.84 which is significant now this is a good indication of where the common method bias is coming from that is causing a significant chi-square difference between the test that is original CFA and CFA with common method variable included. So what if your method or common method bias test is insignificant? You just simply need to report it. You can state in your research that common method bias is not a substantial concern in your research. Do not state that it is not present. It could be present but at a very low levels. In your research, you could even present the chi-square difference test showing the common method bias was not prevalent. With a non-significant common method bias test, there is no need to include common method latent factor in the structural analysis. Your common method test has shown that this potential bias is not a concern moving forward. I hope the video would have helped you understand the common method bias and how to test it using EMOS. Thank you very much.